<sighs> Sorry about that, old chap. <laughs> Gotta go. Welcome to Mojo Plays. I'm Ty. And I'm Johnny. And today we're giving you our respective top 5 best Nintendo 64 games. Like many of you, we grew up with this legendary first foray into 3D gaming. Of course, everyone has their own list of favorites. But whose top 5 is better, mine or Johnny's? Let us know down in the comments and tell us what your top 5 N64 games are. We'll see you there. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. My number five, Conker's Bad Fur Day. So, you want some great stuff? <laughs> yeah! I think the round's on me. I'm gonna get tanked tonight. <laughs> Conker's Bad Fur Day is genuinely one of the funniest games I've ever played. It's such a genius subversion of what you'd expect a platformer starring a cute critter to be. But it's also got plenty of jokes just about the nature of video games like context-sensitive pads, or Conker's collectible of choice being a wad of cash. I know I'm not the only one who greedily collects everything they can. Okay, yes, it also has a singing pile of crap, a bee who's horny for a sunflower, and a boiler with a lot of balls. And no, that's not a turn of phrase. I'm not usually into lowbrow humor, but Conker strikes a fine balance of being completely over the top and incredibly clever. Is it as creative with its gameplay and mechanics as it is with humor and characters? No, which is why it doesn't place any higher for me. It's still one of Rare's best games, though. Okay. Now this is what I call a platform game. My number five, GoldenEye 007. <laughs> though I can agree that there are a couple of things that haven't aged well, the camera controls and the aiming for starters, GoldenEye 007 was a game I feel modern FPSs have refused to learn from, a belief I go into more detail about over in my own video on my own channel. Yes, I make content on my own too, at Spectre Bowl. What really made GoldenEye work well was its level design. It wasn't enough to simply get from point A to point B. You had objectives like sabotaging machines, ambushing and not killing certain NPCs, you know, secret agent stuff that forced you to explore and figure things out for yourself. This structure presented a level of challenge that wasn't just killing all enemies and following a bunch of markers, and that's why GoldenEye still holds up in my book. Plus, the soundtrack and multiplayer still kicks ass. My number four, Super Smash Brothers. Three, two, one, go! I have a lot of love for the N64's multiplayer titles, many of which have left me with a ton of fond memories. But I personally feel the original Smash has aged better than all of them. While characters move much more slowly here than in sequels, the chaotic foundation is still there. Bringing together some of Nintendo's most cherished characters on hazardous arenas with awesome items was a fantastic idea, and one that is still paying off. I can distinctly remember playing it for the first time at daycare, picking Ness even though I had no idea who he was, and spamming PK Fire because I had no idea how to play. From that moment, I was hooked, and all these years later, I'm still a Ness main. Part of my love definitely comes from nostalgia for tense childhood matches, but this game is still a blast to revisit. My number four, Mario Kart 64. Everyone has their favorite entry in the franchise, and I know Mario Kart 64 isn't perfect when it comes to item balance. However, you can't ever diss and dismiss your first. Mario Kart 64 was my first foray into kart racers, and I loved everything that was featured here. Okay, maybe not Wario Stadium, but I loved everything else. The music, though reused in certain tracks, has a certain flow and rhythm that I feel newer Mario Karts just haven't captured. 
Perhaps that's because I've completed Mario Kart 64 several times over, and it's got a smoother difficulty curve, whereas Diddy Kong Racing, which would launch months later in 1997, gets asinine with its rubber banding. Mario Kart 64 gets ridiculous with the rubber banding sometimes too, but between the two, this is the superior kart racer. My number three, The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. If you've heard my voice on Mojo Plays before, chances are pretty good that it was in a Zelda video. It's my all-time favorite gaming franchise, and Ocarina of Time is one of the strongest entries. Everyone praises it for a variety of reasons. As a kid, it was simply the call of adventure, drawing me into a fantastical world. Each new area made me want to explore further, every new character fascinated me, and every item or bit of magic had me in awe. And all the while, the now iconic music carried me along. It was such a wonderful world to be in that I'd often forego the story, simply visiting each location, stocking my inventory, and chatting with the NPCs I'd already talked to dozens of times before. Some aspects haven't aged as well as others, and I prefer a bit more nuance in a story, but I can safely say it deserves the praise it gets. My number three? Super Mario 64. <laughs> I promise my last two entries are not Mario games, but I had to wedge Super Mario 64 somewhere in here. I'm not putting it on here for the simple reason of, oh, I played it growing up, therefore it's the best. No, I'm not putting it here for the music or the level design either. What Super Mario 64 accomplished is astounding, considering the state of the industry at the time. No one had succeeded in implementing fluid motion for the player in a 3D space until Nintendo kicked the door down and showed everyone how it's done. Mario feels so good to control that as a kid, I would boot the game up just to jump and flip around the castle grounds or run around bob -omb Battlefield. Why is such a historic game not my top pick? The camera. It's not abysmal, but it gets really damn annoying sometimes, man. My number two, Banjo Tooie. I've never understood why Banjo Kazooie gets more love than its sequel. Don't get me wrong, it's a great game, but in my mind, Banjo Tooie did everything so much better that it shouldn't even be a competition. It let players keep all the moves they'd learned in the first game while giving you a new batch, most of which were very unique in terms of platforming mechanics. The worlds had grown bigger and more inventive, featuring a connectedness not seen in most platformers at the time. Levels like Witchy World, Hailfire Peaks, and Cloud Cuckoo Land were a joy to explore, making me want to actually spend time in them rather than just look for the collectibles. The humor was still well intact, and the music was just as jolly. Everything about it made me grin ear to ear as a kid, and that is still true today. My number two, Conker's Bad Fur Day. Me, 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 me. I am the great mighty poo, and I'm going to throw my shit at you. Yes, Johnny already touched upon Conquer, but his rank for it is an injustice. Number five, man, are you kidding me? Really? As much as I love the Baron Bird, I believe Conquer's Bad Fur Day is Rare's best game ever. If you've been following Mojo Plays long enough, you know how much I gush over expressive and creative character animation. While that is a big reason why I love this game, the main one is for the narrative structure. For roughly a dozen hours or so, you're thrust into this ridiculous world of talking barn appliances, bouncy buxom sunflowers, snobby catfish, and singing poo. And the way it weaves a story about recklessness and naivete creates this unique experience of oddities that I believe everyone needs to play at least once. If you want to hear more about my thoughts on Conquer, go check out our video we made for the Squirrel's 20th anniversary back in 2021. 
Well, sounds a bit strange, but okay. Strange? The best bloody deal you're going to get, you little prick. Right, that's it. Piss off. My number one, The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. Majora's Mask isn't just my favorite N64 game. It's my favorite game of all time. That wasn't always the case. As a kid, its mature themes, complex dungeons, and the necessity of its three-day time loop completely went over my head. But like many others, I came to understand its true beauty later. Characters that I once thought were odd became deep and layered. The three-day time period vexed many players, but I now see it as a structured way to make your choices and the actions of the NPCs matter, even if you could restart and try again. It's often thought of as the darkest entry, exploring loss, uncertainty, and fear from a variety of angles, but it also showcases love and pride in the face of such devastation. I haven't even touched on the gameplay. The Deku, Goron, and Zora forms all bring something new and exciting. Simply put, there's no other game like it, on the 64 or otherwise. My number one, Star Fox 64. I see him up ahead. Let's rock and roll. I have not played any other N64 game as much or as many times as I have played Star Fox 64. This game satisfied me as a kid with its hokey Saturday morning cartoon writing, its vehicles, and its enemies. As an adult, it blows my mind how it doubles up as a choose-your-own-adventure based on your actions in certain levels, and once you know how to access all the paths, you can sort of craft the story in your own way, and it almost makes sense regardless of where you go. The sound design is utterly fantastic in craft and delivery. Every sound emphasizes the power and intensity of the R-Wing and that communicator static. Always a joy to hear. And each playthrough from Corneria to Venom only takes a decent pilot under an hour to finish, making it easily replayable, and every time I reach those end credits, I get goosebumps, man. It's one of those games that gives me pure absolute bliss no matter how many times I play it, no matter how long I play it, and that is why it is my favorite N64 game ever. As you can see, we both have some of the most acclaimed games in the N64's library. One of them twice. But whose list do you prefer? And what type of showdown would you like to see us do next? Share your thoughts and your personal top 5 in the comments below. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips for Mojo Plays, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.